Listen to this lovely invitation from Jesus. In Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30, the message translation by Eugene Peterson. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. My guest has taken the Lord's word to heart. He's applied every one of them to every area of his life. Dr. Arthur Boers is living into focus, choosing what matters in an age of distractions. He's not living a contemplative retirement, just in case you think he's hiding out somewhere. Dr. Boers is an associate professor and R.J. Bernardo Family Chair of Leadership at Tyndale Seminary. He has served as a pastor for 16 years. He's an award-winning author of six books, including The Rhythm of God's Grace. And Arthur, when I read that in your book, I thought, this sounds like a verse from Eugene Peterson's right. The Message Translation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, guess who did the foreword to the book? Eugene Peterson. Yep. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, he is not your main mentor. Right. Mm -hmm. A man with the same initials as you. Yes. And I would say the Bruce Trail mm -hmm. are probably your key mentors. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened to you. Well, I grew up near the Bruce Trail, not too far from here as a teenager, a mile or two from the Bruce Trail, and, but I never went on it. I knew it was there and I wasn't interested in it. I didn't really enjoy exercise. Um, in high school, I dropped phys ed as soon as it wasn't required, and uh, I was like Mark Twain who said, when you have the exercise, uh, when you have the urge to exercise, lie down until it goes away. Uh -huh. and, uh, but in middle age, for some reason, I read, I read a newspaper article about a number of middle-aged folks who walk the Bruce Trail on a part-time basis, and I thought, I could do that. And uh, so I decided to do that on a part-time basis. I couldn't do it on weekends because I was a pastor, but I would take my day off Monday and uh, I would go and walk on the Bruce Trail. And at first it was just the, the challenge of it. Um, I had decided I would walk the entire 500 miles and uh, I'm kind of stubborn. And so once I decide to do something, I just press ahead no matter what. But what surprised me was that it wasn't just a physical challenge. Um, and uh, I realized that there were a lot of sp spiritual benefits to walking outside long distances, enjoying the creation that God made. And it was a time of prayer and reflection and always kind of recalibrating my life, thinking about my life, reflecting on the previous week, thinking about where perhaps things got off balance and uh, deciding what, what is my most important priority. And eventually I realized that the, the long distance walking served as a spiritual discipline. It was a lot like going on retreats, something that I had done for years and years with the added benefit of being outside, breathing fresh air, getting physical ec exercise, enjoying God's nature. And uh, so it, it, it led to me having a deeper commitment to walking and eventually I went over to Spain and walked a 500 mile pilgrimage route there as well. A very famous walk mm -hmm. called? The Camino de Santiago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is so much more than an encouragement to get into exercise and, 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 and get into shape. Mm -hmm. You keep using the word reflection. I think that's a lost practice mm -hmm. in our culture. There's noise everywhere. Right. We're speeding up. Yeah. Increasingly speeding up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you mentioned the Grand Canyon in the book. I have to share this because uh -huh. I took your book. Look at the state of this poor book. This is not how my vacation books usually come back. But my um, vacation reading is always something special. God just orchestrates yes. it. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to sound as if I'm gushing, but this is the book I am taking into the rest of my life until Jesus comes because it is speaking the answer to everything my soul is mm -hmm. crying for. Mm -hmm. And for you, it has meant a lot of changes. Let me just say, you talk about the Grand Canyon, right. one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Mm -hmm. um, you say that the average stay there is 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, for people that just drive up, that is absolutely true. Um, 
In fact, I, I talked to someone we both know, and he and his wife spent 20 minutes okay. got back in the car and drove the three and a half, hour, three and a half hours back to Las Vegas. Wow. We, uh, here's the proof. Uh, I did it, the uh, Grand Canyon Skywalk. Um, there's my husband and me in April. Three hours. We spent a wonderful wow. three hours at this beautiful, beautiful place of discovery. Um, I am five minutes from the Bruce Trail. Wow, great. This is a season where uh, my children and I, with my husband, biked on the Bruce Trail. Okay. And I was fit in those days. Mm. I mean, I could even wear shorts then. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, th this is a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. I I'm, f I'm five minutes from this opportunity to get away from the noise. You would call this a focal practice. Mm -hmm. Talk about focal practices and what they can bring to our lives. Mm -hmm. Focal practices is a term that I got from the philosopher that you alluded, alluded to, to earlier. His name's Albert Borgman. He's a philosopher in uh, Montana. And he says that there are things in our lives, activities in our lives that require effort, that connect us to other people and remind us of what's most important. And um, so for me, hiking would be an example of a focal practice. It takes the effort of getting to the trail and walking the long distance, hurting my muscles. <laughs> I connect with other people who walk along the trail, uh, other people who are interested in nature. And the third thing, which I already talked about as well, is I got reconnected with God. I got reconnected with God's involvement in my life and what my priorities were and made a commitment to doing that again. So different folks have different uh, focal practices. And I interviewed a number of people in this book and one, one person I interviewed was in her uh, late 70s. I've known her for 30 years and about 10 to 12 years ago she started bird watching and it's changed her life uh, and it's changed her relationship with, with God. She's really come to understand God in a lot different ways um, than, than she used to uh, when she was brought up in a fairly restrictive community mm. uh, um, somewhere down south. And uh, so that's an example of focal practice. I, I talked to somebody else who's a baker, somebody else who's a quilter, uh, and one woman I know writes letters every day. She writes, she writes letters every single day. Her mail carrier is astonished because she's almost the only one on the route who gets actual real mail, not just junk mail and subscriptions. Be still and know that I am God. Yes. Here's the intimate <clears throat> moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't Facebook, you don't Twitter, you don't have a cell phone. Your wife has a cell phone. Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. uh, you are, my husband said, oh, he's anti-technology. You are very clear mm -hmm. that you are not anti-technology, but you do have an acronym for alerts, uh, and this is how we should relate to technology. Mm -hmm. Attention limits engagement, relationships, time, space. Right. We don't have time to break it down. It's sure. in the book. Mm -hmm. But just those words tell us we got to have some boundaries. Yes. I think one of the most startling things, and I'm looking for the cartoon, there's some wonderful uh, drawings in here. Um, page 12. Okay, here we go. This is just one of many. Can we come in on this one? Um, a new member of the family being introduced. And uh, I mean, the television is not new technology. Let me read what this says for you. Um, this is our new family member. From now on, we will spend every night with him, and we will rearrange our furniture and schedules to accommodate him. The challenge is think about how technology shapes your life. Right. One of the most disturbing statistics in the book, uh, a study was done on families who actually do show up for dinner time mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And something like only 17% sat and ate together, right. even when they were all home. Yes. They all went to their different screens. Mm -hmm. One took their dinner to the TV room, one mm -hmm. took the, up to the bedroom with his computer, mm -hmm. and so on. Right. That's what we've become. Yes. Never mm -hmm. mind inviting the neighbors over exactly. for some hospitality. Mm -hmm. We can't even get the family connecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they are, they're texting under the table. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't allow it. Okay. That's good. That's a good, good first step. Eat meals and eat them without screens. But we have such a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Focal practice, three characteristics. Mm -hmm. Commanding presence. Mm -hmm. Take effort. Mm -hmm. They take effort. Mm -hmm. Take effort. Mm -hmm. Connectedness and continuity. Right. So they connect us with other people. They connect us with history. They connect us with nature. They connect us with God. Mm. And 
centering and orienting power. Right. Almost sounds new agey, but let's not get scared. Centering and orienting power. Reminds us of what's most important and helps us make a commitment to what's most important. How do we get the message out? Well, this is a good way to start. I, I, I find that as, as, you, as I journeyed through this, it, it challenged me at every point. Mm. What's winning here? What's winning? And what am I losing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we, you, I love the term dwell. Mm -hmm. How do we get back to dwelling? Dwelling, right. I mean, even sometimes when you engage with people, you can tell their motor's running. You talk about people uh, talking to each other, and the person you're engaged with is looking over their shoulder wondering, well, who could right. I talk to next who might be more interesting? Mm -hmm. We're so driven mm -hmm. by pace, by, I, I mean, what you talk about in the television arena mm -hmm. is, is so bang on. Mm -hmm. It's no longer just the techniques of quickly changing shots and, and the close-ups and the fast movement. It's got to have the shock value. Right. It's got to be the open cadaver. It's got to be the... Uh, anyway, I'm yep. sorry, I'm probably being way too graphic here, folks, but this is what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and studies will show that when people are busy, when they're distracted, when they're tired, they don't actually live up to their priorities. They may, they may have decisions that they've made, values that they want to honor, but when they're busy or distracted or tired, they do things that are, not, are contrary to their deepest values. So that's one of the reasons why we want to encourage people to slow down and dwell and to pay attention. Because we live in a culture that keeps us very busy, keeps us very distracted, keeps us off balance, and keeps asking us to do more and more, so we're tired. And we're not honoring our priorities. And you know, a lot of priorities are quite easy to honor. They're there, we can do them if we just determine together. I think that's one of the secrets that we as Christians have to uh, resolve together. We have to talk together, make this commitment and hold each other accountable. It's not that hard to walk a little more. It's not that hard to write a few letters a year. It's not that hard to cook a meal and invite your neighbors over. Really, it's not that hard. But there's something about the temptations of all the opportunities in our culture that displaces those very, very good practices. Well, I can't remember having a book that has ignited more lively conversation. Literally Sunday on the street, I bumped into two women and brought this up. We stood there till we were freezing wow. talking on this subject. Uh -huh. So, I mean, do you need to make space for grace and beauty and focus? Arthur Burris will walk you through some practical reflection on the road to a more abundant life. There's the outcome. It's better living. We can do this. We need to make some choices. And the challenge is here. If you read this with your family, it will change the way you live together. As one reviewer said, this book is a life raft in a sea of words. Get your copy at our e-store, Living Into Focus, Choosing What Matters in an Age of Distractions. Thank you so much, Dr. Burris. Thank you very much, Barbara. God bless mm -hmm. you. Keep going. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>